Hello wonderful person, welcome to What Math. this is Anton and in one of the previous Space Engine videos I decided to try to find our sun using pretty much nothing but visual navigation. And then one of you decided to give me another challenge. And this is the challenge that I'm going to refer to as the dynamic challenge because I believe that's the name of the person who challenged me. Let's find out if I can actually do it. Welcome to What Math. <laughs> So it looks like, just like in the previous video, we decided to go on a journey across the galaxy, across the universe, but then this time we realized we forgot something again. We forgot our star identifier, the thingy that allows us to identify stars by clicking on them. So we have to go back and pick it up again from our closet, wherever we left it, at home. But we obviously have to do it by going back to Earth without using anything. We cannot use anything except for visual identifiers, and this is going to be an uncut video, it's going to be all kind of, I guess, in real time, but not really. Meaning that I'm basically trying to avoid cheating and looking things up, just going directly for where I think maybe Sun and Earth are. It's going to be very challenging, is it impossible? Well, no. Have I tried this before and succeeded? No. Have I tried this many, many times before this? Yes, I have. I've been doing this for many, many hours now, it's fun. You should try it sometime. Anyway, Galactic North is this way, I, this is how I define it, uh, by looking at uh, the Magellanic Clouds. We're now going to go straight right here and look for Carina Nebula, uh, this is it right there. And we're now going to look for Orion Nebula, which is somewhere right here. And promise me I'm not cutting anything, um, this is completely unedited, so I'm going to be basically ranting a lot just so you know that I'm, I'm not cheating here. Uh, alright, I'm not going the right way. Orion, Orion, Orion is not here. Orion is... That's not Orion's belt. I need to find Orion's belt. Um, the problem with Orion Nebula in this game is that it doesn't appear until you come to it, re like, straight on, basically. Right in his face. Then it will appear. Then it will be like, hey, it's me, Orion, how are you? But until then, oh, there it is. Until then... Until then, it is not going to appear. Wait a second. Isn't this the same as what I was looking at before? Uh-oh, I'm already lost. That's not a good start. Oh, this is Carina Nebula. Right? No. Wrong. Totally wrong. This is Carina Nebula. Yeah, of course. So, that means that Orion Nebula is... Uh, e, mm, here. No, not here. I I saw a nebula, so I jumped into it. Alrighty, very good start to this journey adventure. I can try this uh, from this angle. Actually, you know what? This is what we're going to do. Nobody said that increasing the magnitude of stars is, is, is cheating, right? It's not, not cheating at all. This right there is um, Crab Nebula. And this right here is Orion Nebula. Haha! -ha. Beautiful. I was looking for you for like a minute and a half. Okie dokie. Uh, let's decrease the uh, magnitude again. Now, why are we here? I totally don't remember. Actually, I do. We're looking for Beetlejuice. And I think this is right here. Uh, this is right there, I think. I'm not sure, but there is some other star that look like it, but it is the brightest looking star, so it must be Beetlejuice. We don't really want to go there, though. We're going to go past it to a star known as Antares, which should be right there. How do I know this is Antares? Well, two reasons. There's a lot of bright stars around it. It's, it's in a kind of a... Um, I, almost like a star nursery, a lot of really bright new stars. There's also this nebula right here, and it's the only orange star. And once I come to it, it's going to be very, very beautiful. It's a binary star that has an amazing, amazing look, especially when you zoom into it. There it is. Yeah, look at that. Very beautiful, where'd you go? Very beautiful binary star. All right, so we're in the right spot. Next, we're going to go back. We're going to go back towards... Uh, Orion Nebula, but not really. I'm, I like to position myself so it kind of makes like a question mark here. Which is like asking you, why are you doing this to yourself? Uh, this is Beetlejuice. This is Crab Nebula. 
And this is what I need. This is um, the Pleiades, also known as the Sisters. It's seven very, very bright stars that I'm going to zoom toward at the velocity of about 40 light years a second for approximately 12 seconds. We're going about 400 light years away from Antares. And we're going to stop right before this chunk of stars right here. This is Taurus constellation. Um, all right. Yeah. You know what? We're already in a neighborhood of our home system. There's two more stars I like to look at. It's these right here. And I always forget their names. I always forget their names. They have a very funny five letter name. I think it sounds like Tajan, but it's not. It's totally not. And I really need to know their names because I've been using them to orient myself for forever now. And the way I kind of like to do this is I like to kind of like make them align with each other because they actually have the same name. One is, <clears throat> one, excuse me, one is known posterior and one is known as primary. And if you position yourself in this way and you start looking around, you will find the most difficult to find star in this particular mission. That star is serious. It is very difficult to find seriously. And my apologies for the pun, but it is really hard to find. And it's not because it's just, you know, hard to find because it's invisible. It is hard to find because it is so many stars like it next, next to it. This could be it. This could be it. This could be it. Actually, maybe this is it. Uh... I'm have, I have a strong feeling that this might be it, but I'm not sure, because it could also be this. And the reason why I'm looking for Sirius is because it's the brightest star next to us. It is the brightest star next to our star, next to Sun. And what makes it different from other stars similar to it in this region is that it is a binary star consisting of two very bright objects, kind of like this, Series A and Series B. I'm totally just guessing here, because I don't really have my identification machine, but for all I know, this is Series A and Series B. And Series is very difficult to find because there's other stars that look similar to it in this region. Um, there's Polus, there's um, Procyon, there's a bunch of them. There's uh, Castor, I believe, as well. Now, if I actually kind of look toward this region right here, about five light years away from Sirius should be our home star. This, um, our home star. Our sun. Maybe this is it, actually. I'm guessing. I'm going to take a wild guess at this. Right now, I'm, I'm headed toward it because it kind of looks like our sun. It's very dim-ish. It is an orange star. It's a little brighter than the red stars near it. Like, it's a little bit brighter than, than this star and a little bit brighter than this star, but not as bright as Sirius, obviously. So it is an orange um, orange dwarf. It's a main sequence star, and the only way we'll know this is the sun is... There's really only the only way. If when we approach it... <laughs> it doesn't have binary star. So that's not the sun. <laughs> uh, this is pro Actually, you know what? This could be a Proxima Centauri. This could be Proxima Centauri. Maybe this is our sun. I'm gonna go here. Yeah, the only way we know it uh, that it is, it's the sun if uh, the third planet from the sun, from that star, looks like our Earth. If that looks like Earth, then you know we're home. And I am just kind of guesstimating here. Because you know what? To me, this totally looks star uh, sun-like. The star is sun-like. And it has the same brightness as our sun. It has a kind of a similar parameters. Look, at there's planets that coming up. And my apologies for making this kind of jerky, because this is really how I move around. I actually need to use this parallax to sometimes see how far the stars are. It's how the satellites do it, and it's how Anton does it as well. Alright, so it, assuming this is the sun, because it kind of looks like it. One, two, three, right? Is there four? So, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, maybe? Yeah? Okay, let's find out. Let's find out. If this is number three, it should have another object next to it as we get closer. It will have the moon. Very, very well, uh, very highly visible from a distance. It actually has quite a, quite a bright brightness. Qu quite a high brightness, that is. Oh, too much. Whoa. 
Oh, I'm landed somewhere. Where am I? Where is this? Who are you? Uh, oh, you know what? This sure looks like Venus to me. This sure looks like Venus. I don't know about you, but to me, where is it? Where, where are you? Where'd you go? To me, this actually looks like Venus. Planet number two. So maybe, just maybe, we might be almost home. We might be not lost in space after all. All right, so if this is Venus, which one is number three? It's kind of hard to see from this angle. You are number three, right? You're, oh, look at that. Look, See how there's two, like a visible, a little object visible next to it? You see how there's like literally a, a small object next to it? This is definitely, I can tell you, 99% chance that this is Earth. Because Earth is one very, 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 very few planets out there that has such a large satellite. It is very, very rare for an object to have such a large satellite next to it. And that is Earth. I can tell you right away. I don't even have to guess anymore. But if it's not Earth, you can laugh at me. And I'm totally posting this video anyway. But this is Earth. I can tell you right away. I I've said it three times already, right? Look at that. Blue planet. Yeah, yeah. Familiar, maybe. Oh... That's right, we're home. We're home, everybody. Let's go pick up that device we lost. And wait, is this home? No, no, I totally moved my camera too fast. Come back, where are you? No, wait, uh, where'd you go? Earth, come back. Earth. Oh, there you are. I uh, pressed the wrong button. I pressed the right button instead of the left button and my camera jerked into a completely different direction. But looks like what? It took me, what, I don't know, 10 minutes-ish? And that's... That's totally the wrong planet again. Uh, but we found Earth, and so it is possible. It is possible to use visual navigation, nothing but visual navigation, to discover Earth from the outside of the solar system. And if you're aliens watching this and you want to find Earth, please don't watch this video. Or we're basically screwed. Because chances are if aliens ever find us, they're going to colonize us and turn us into slaves. Not that I'm saying that there are intelligent aliens, but if they are out there, they're going to be no different from the humans. And I cannot believe it's so hard for me to zoom into our planet. There it is again. All right, so here we go. Let's move really slowly and make sure that we land this time. And I'm actually going to enable spacecraft mode because it's a little bit easier to navigate with that mode. Here we go. That's definitely Earth, right? Yeah, confirmed. Earth confirmed. This is South America. All right, we're home, everyone. All right, so hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to subscribe if you still haven't. Don't forget to share this video and like it if you've actually enjoyed it. Um, this was actually a challenge, uh, like I mentioned before. And someone posted this in the, in the comments of the previous video. And I figured, you know what? Why don't I try? I'm sure it's going to be really difficult. I'm sure I'm going to spend hours and hours doing it. But with persistence comes success. And we found it using those specific stars that I mentioned before. Those are the locations that are very easy, visible, very, very easy to see. And if you're actually now we can use our star identifier and there you go, Earth, just to confirm. So there you have it. You can try this yourself. I actually encourage you to try this yourself because it's kind of fun. It's very challenging, but once you succeed, it is a very interesting feeling that you have. That you feel like you're some sort of a space adventurer that you now exactly... You basically now know exactly where Earth is, and it's a, it's a pretty interesting way of learning about our galaxy and, of course, our universe as well. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video where we're going to do something different. I Unless you come up with a different challenge, like do it with your eyes closed, which I don't think I can do. I can tell you right now, I will probably fail. Uh, but yes, out of, what, 300 billion stars, we were able to locate our beautiful planet and our beautiful star in the multitude of other stars just by using nebulas and really bright identifying stars, which we will be using one day when we go beyond our own solar system and we actually start exploring stars for real. Because that is how we're going to be doing it anyway. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Give you later. Bye-bye.